These are the simple steps you can follow in predicting the probability of the genotypes and the phenotypes of offspring using the Punnett square. The Punnett square allows you to chart the individual alleles that represent the genotypes of the parent and the probability that these genotypes will be observed among the offspring. Probability is the chance that something will happen. In genetics, probability is the chance that the particular characteristic we observed in the offspring. It is a chance for the plant offspring, for example, to inherit green pod or yellow pod from the parent plants. Recall our previous lesson on genotypes and phenotypes of organisms. A genotype consists of the actual alleles that make up the gene for a particular trait. In this case, it is represented with the alleles capital letter A for dominant dark color and the recessive small letter A for light color. The phenotype consists of the actual observable character based on the allele composition of the gene. In this case, it is the color either dark or light which are the actual characters for color as the trait. Recall as well our lesson on Mendel's law of segregation, where the individual alleles separate during gamete formation. To start, we write the alleles of one parent on top of the Punnett square. In this illustration, we represent the dominant alleles for tall stem as capital letter T. The genotype of this parent is said to be homozygous, since the gene for stem height is composed of the same alleles. Then we write the alleles of the other parent on the left side of the Punnett square. In this illustration, we represent the alleles as both recessive dwarf stem, so we write both alleles as small letter T. The genotype of this parent is also said to be homozygous, since the gene for stem height is composed of the same allele. On the first box, we cross the dominant T with the recessive T. And the resulting alleles of the offspring are capital letter T and a small letter T. On the second box, we cross the dominant T with the recessive small letter T. And the resulting alleles of the offspring are capital letter T and a small letter T. On the third box, we cross the dominant capital letter T with the recessive small letter T. And the resulting alleles of the offspring are capital letter T and small letter T. On the fourth box, we cross the dominant T with the recessive small letter T and the resulting alleles of the offspring are capital letter T and small letter T. Let us cross the alleles once again. On the first box we cross the dominant capital letter T with the recessive small letter T and the resulting alleles of the offspring are capital letter T and small letter T. On the second box we cross the dominant capital letter T with the recessive small letter T and the resulting alleles of the offspring are capital letter T and small letter T. On the third box 
we also cross the dominant capital letter T with the recessive small letter T and resulting alleles of the offspring are capital letter T, small letter T. On the fourth box, we cross the dominant capital letter T with the recessive small letter T and the resulting alleles of the offspring are capital letter T and small letter T. We can then predict the genotype and phenotype probability of the offspring of the said parental cross. Since all the offspring receive a dominant capital letter T allele and a recessive small letter T allele, then all of the offspring have a heterozygous gene for stem height. If the gene for a given trait is composed of different alleles, then the genotype is considered heterozygous. Therefore, there is a 100% probability that the offspring of a homozygous dominant tall plant and a homozygous dwarf plant have a heterozygous allele for stem height. That is, each of them consists of the dominant capital letter T and a recessive small letter T. Since the homozygous dominant gene expresses itself as tall stem, and the heterozygous dominant gene expresses itself also as tall stem, And only when the gene is homozygous recessive can it be expressed as dwarf stem. Therefore, all of the offspring will inherit the tall stem from the parent plant. Since tall is dominant over dwarf, therefore, there is also 100% probability that these offspring all have tall stems and none of them will have a dwarf stem.